And if I would just depending on my own reasoning and all of this stuff, I wouldn't have stopped. Right. I would, I would have just said, this guy's no good. Just keep it going. But instead in obedience where he just says, open your mouth and I'll fill it. We just say by faith, Hey, and then God opens the door. God does something. Hey, what's up? Hi. That is awesome to be here. It's awesome that our daughter is like finally done with her long to-do list before bed. <laughs> and we like we ended on time. It, it is a miracle <laughs> sometimes that we just get her into bed. But no, it is awesome to be here. And you know, we as we keep going through this uh this this season. Yeah of evangelism and getting out and sharing the gospel mm -hmm. um there's some there's some there's a very important aspect that we haven't touched on yet and that is actually the pastors or the people who go out and start to plant churches and i think it's really awesome it makes me think of peter when god says you know on this rock i will build my church and <laughs> the what is it the the hell right was it gates of ha hades shall not prevail yeah. against it and yeah. it's like man so we got the perfect guest i was like you know what i know somebody <laughs> i know somebody and he's awesome and I'm just going to let you bring him in because this is the perfect episode and the perfect topic for how he's going to bring this out and how the calling is and how we move forward in starting churches, because that is a huge part in evangelism. Evangelism plays a huge role. Yeah. So this is the very last guest of the season. And so if you've been sticking it out with us, we hope that you've been inspired. We have one more episode in the season, but this is a special case because since we know this awesome fellow that we're about to introduce, I told him all of the episodes because we prefaced this conversation with a pre-chat. He got to hear all the episodes that were coming up that hadn't aired yet. And then he prayerfully kind of figured out what was missing. And so... For once, instead of saying, hey, let's talk about this, we were like, hey, <laughs> what's left to talk yes. about? So Pastor Bailey Norman is actually the very first pastor that I heard preach at our current church that we've been at for nine years. So he must have done something right, even though he was visiting um, our our pastor, Pastor Kim. He was away doing, you know, something godly somewhere else. And so Pastor Bailey did the sermon and whatever he said was enough to be like, yep, that's the place for me. And uh, right now he is up in Massachusetts and he helped launch Greater Grace Christian Fellowship down here and then again up in Massachusetts. So you'll learn more about him as the episode goes on. But welcome, Pastor Bailey. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you guys. Yeah, I, that for sure. Yeah, I think the biggest thing yeah. that I've ever known about Pastor Bailey is that we stole his church name. <laughs> <laughs> and then we renamed to and, cover our tracks. And, and thank <laughs> you that we merged with another church so that we could get away from it. So that. you get away with it. We stole the logo. You stole the name. We took the logo. Uh, hey, but, you know what, uh, though? Look, nothing out there is is is. I think copyrights are dumb anyways. Like we have a we have a whole episode <laughs> no, that we went across that on that anyways. But hey, welcome to the show. And and you actually had an opportunity to go out and we would love for you to kind of open us this conversation up so that we can start breaking this down and having a conversation about this the church building. Yeah. Man, it's great to be with you guys. I know we've been talking about this for years now and uh, <laughs> we finally connected. So uh, I love what you guys are doing and uh, trying to catch up with this season, but I love it. I love the conversation. I love the challenge. I love the gracious encouragement in it all. So uh, it's been great. Um, so so I've been pastoring up here in Massachusetts for six years, and uh, I've had the opportunity to be a part of quite a few church plants in different places in the world, and uh, it's exciting. You know, it's funny. I don't actually think so much about it, but then when I think about it, I'm like, wow, I've I've had the opportunity to be to work with some amazing pastors and see some incredible things from the beginning. And um, and I can tell you confidently that the beginning of everything we've ever done has been tons of evangelism. Yeah. Uh, and this this call of the Great Commission, if the church doesn't have it, then then it's missing something pretty valuable. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, to to talk about it, to think about it. It's not, not something we have to come up with because it's our life and uh, it's what, it's what we do, right? We go out and we, we meet people and uh, we initiate these conversations with them. So, so um, what, is, what, what, however, does that, what does that look like? 
in, in, in some ways, because I know you, you actually started our church as well. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. You were on that church plant, but when you move yeah. into an area or when you're called into that area, what are some of the logistics behind you, you know, moving into it? What are you looking for? What are you looking at? How does that play out? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing because, uh, you never know like what the spiritual climate is in places. And we pray, right. We pray and pray and pray that God would lead us to a place, but like there where you guys are, we, we just landed there on, because there was a group of us in Bible college, you know, we're all 18, 19 years old, learning all this stuff. And we're just looking for some way to apply it. And we found, we found your area. We're like, man, this is an amazing place. Like it would, the setup was perfect where there was this area where everyone congregated from all walks of life, all different, all different things. And, uh, so we just showed up there one night and we found that it was open. Really, we just started talking to people and started initiating conversations and we found that there was like a spiritual hunger. So so we look for that and uh you know, we look at the area like are there people, A, <laughs> right? Uh is there is there an openness and like logistically could there be a church there? Um so you know, and then we just we just go in and we spend as much time as we can on the streets and going door to door, just meeting people and, um, and things go from there. I don't, I don't know. Like there's no real formula, right? So we meet, we meet people and we say, Hey, could we do a Bible study at your house? And they say, yeah, you actually, that would be cool. So there's another night where they're doing a Bible study at somebody's house. I don't know if you guys remember Sam and, uh, Sam Ebenezer and his wife. Yeah. And we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we yeah. did Bible studies in their house in the week. And then in the weekends we were doing Bible studies at the Methodist church and, just uh, people just started coming in. And honestly, we were surprised because here we are, you know, like I said, 18, 19, 20, uh, maybe I wasn't 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. And we're just out there preaching with passion and like meeting people and they're coming in the door. We're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do now? Right? <laughs> and, and, uh, and then thank God Pastor Kim came along and brought a little stability to our group. But, uh, and then we joined his team actually. So yeah. Um, yeah. Now, based on what you said before we started the official interview, there is no, you know, exact formula. It's not like every place you go, you you start the exact same way. Um, but there is a key that is always kind of in play, and that's obedience. And so I wanted to kind yeah. of give you the floor to kind of lay, help people get a little perspective into that. Because, again, you know, last season, obey, obey him before anyone else. The word obey, hopefully for our normal listeners it's not as triggering anymore and a knee-jerk reaction and they're like oh yeah i love that but for anyone <laughs> joining us like after that season um give us give us a little bit of how this plays in and what it unlocks in a believer's life and in the lives of those around them yeah yeah so um this great commission you guys are talking about to go right go and it's not it's not a suggestion it's not like this warm, fuzzy thing that Jesus says, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you, you know, maybe did this, like, <laughs> if you feel like it, but it's, it's just a straight up, Hey, go and make disciples. Like I'm not leaving you here to, uh, to just have a cushy life, but I'm actually leaving you here to testify of me and to, uh, and I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the power to go into this world and share a message that changes people's lives. So, I think obedience is, is the big thing um, that, that as I t take a step of faith in obedience, I find something happens, right? right? Like we can, we always look for the, the checklist or we look for the method, but there's a lot in the Bible that just leaves it up to, will you do it? Like I've said it, will you, will you follow me in it? And we say, yeah, Lord, but we need to know the parameters. We need to know the limitations. We need to know the potential. We need to know what we're going to step in. We need to know, you know, how it's going to go. And he says that that wasn't the, that wasn't the command. It was just to go yeah. and that I would be the one who would be taking care of everything along the way. So this obedience opens the door for God to work. And uh, that's something that you see throughout the book of Acts, especially if we talk about missions and evangelism, the book of Acts is like, I mean, this should be a movie. This should be a series. It's like <laughs> right. action packed. It is, there's drama, there's intrigue, there's, you know, escapes, there's all kinds of stuff. It's amazing. But what you see every single chapter, what you see 
is simply men and women being obedient. And in their obedience, God opens miraculous doors and does miraculous things. Like if you think about Peter and John in Acts chapter 4, walking up to the, the beautiful gate for worship, and there's a guy begging, right? He's asking for alms, and they don't have anything to give him, seemingly, right? Silver and gold I've, I, I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. And they just grab the guy by the hand and pick him up, and he, he lands on his feet. Like it, it's incredible, mm. but that doesn't happen if they're not going, right? So the work, the miraculous work is God's to do. Like he has the plan. He has the people. He has the heart opened, but what he gives for me to do is obey. So he's not asking me to heal the lame. He's not asking me to bring the gospel into Spain or Macedonia. Like we'll see, but all he's asking me to do is take a step of faith and obedience and, uh, and watch him work. So I think obedience, opening the door for a miracle and the miracle opening the door for the gospel. Like that's what we see consistently through the book of Acts, but it doesn't happen without this obedience. That 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 right there talks a lot of sub- submission. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm completely stepping back. You know, not com- not like stepping back from moving. I-, I like what Pastor Shibley said one time, and it actually bit him because I all of a sudden I almost went to Arkansas with the, with our <laughs> with our church plan out there because he stood up there in one of the classes. He's like. Don't just sit around, you know, you got to move and, and God's going to open or close those doors. And then we were like, house was on the market. We were about to <laughs> head out to Arkansas. And I'm like, but you know, in that moment, I really was learning like the submittedness towards it. Like yeah. we're, we're moving, but you're, you're sitting. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like you're moving, yeah. but you're sitting at the throne of God and you're like, Hey, you know, it's, 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 it's that throne of grace. That's going to sustain me. So here I am. Use me. And I like what you're saying about the obedience. Mm-hmm. Now, where's some examples in acts where we see this, where we see this call, where people start to move forward. You're, you're talking about acts. And I know we had discussed a little bit like Acts 16. When, what were you getting at when we were talking about that? Yeah. So Acts chapter 16, uh, falls on a, a missionary journey with Timothy and Silas and they're just blazing a trail. Right. And they have a plan. They know where they're going to go. And, um, it picks up here in, in verse one. It says, then, then he came to Derby and Lystra, And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because he was of the Jews who were in the region, and they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them, they delivered to them the decrees, which were determined by the apostles and the elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in number daily. So we see as they're going, the churches are, are strengthened in faith and increasing in number. Right? So they're going out in obedience and it's happening. <clears throat> but now verse 6, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Right? Like what, mm. what is the negative? Why, why are they forbidden? And, and Paul could have just ramrodded it through, right? right. Like, no, this is the plan. This is where we're going. We're going to Asia, right? We've been there. It's fruitful. It's open. But the Holy Spirit is forbidding them. Like, no, you're not going. So here we go. Uh, Just because it's a good thing, does that mean it's what God wants me to do, right? Mm -hmm. Just because just because I like that area, just because I've been there before, does that mean that's where I'm supposed to be? Or am I willing to put away what I think, put down my plan, and follow the leading of God. So um, so then that verse 7, there's another step, right? After they had come to My Asia, My, My, Mycia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them, right? So they're forbidden, and then they're not permitted. And where we could find discouragement in that, we could find despair, we could say, okay, then what are we doing? But instead, he's continuing. So, so passing by Mycia, they came down to Troas, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Right. So now we see that this is like a pioneer advancement, right? And bringing the gospel to a place that hasn't been. And, and, And what does it take? It, but it takes obedience, not going there, but going this way. And 
um, the call of this guy from Macedonia is come over and help us. Right. So here is Paul, Timothy, Silas, like, you know, world renowned, right. Paul, maybe the most dynamic guy ever after Jesus, right. One of the most important guys in human history. And here he is come over and help us. And what does he determine that help is that help is preaching the word help is bringing the gospel. So, there's obedience to the gospel and they go and there's more difficulty, but also now they bring the gospel into a whole new part of the world and they meet a whole new group of people and it's incredible. So, um, so there, there's Paul's obedience in this, this one chapter, not going, but then going and believing that what he has to say is the help that these people need. Oh, wow. And, and we crossed into submission there, too. It's yeah. like it's like he who had the area led me here with the spirit saying to the church, you know, obviously they were in a submitted state to, or humbled state to where they were hearing the Holy Spirit as well. I also like the fact that when you look into the details of this, uh, the southwesterly uh, direction was closed down. The northern direction was closed down. The only direction they had left was northwestern. <laughs> when you look yeah. at it on the map, it's like he's like, no, no, no. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah it's pretty clear. <laughs> I love it. it. I love Creating it. like a gauntlet. Yeah. And, you know, I think of two things in what you just said. One, you kind of already said it, but I like to reiterate little nuggets for people listening is that it's not sometimes we wait and wait and wait and end up paralyzed by it with inaction because we're waiting for this very specific command of a destination or, you know, defining the goal. And really what you see over and over is people coming up with a goal with the right heart and then God redirecting. So the key is not just to wait for him to give you this clear thing before you do anything, but instead to be incredibly open, absolutely open to redirection. Don't Mm, be married to any plan or definition of what this mission success would be. Let just try. And he's and as long as you're moving, he's going to keep redirecting Mm. you like a gps just redirects you around and so you're like well i'm gonna start i'm gonna go over to the grocery store oops nope the gps is redirecting me all like all the way around i'm not gonna question it i'm just gonna roll you know Um, as long as it aligns with the word and then the other nugget that you alluded to is that come help us and his definition of like the best help he could give is not improving their economic situation or improving Mm. their, you know, emotional or mental situation, but instead bring the gospel because that's the underlying root solution to whatever is ailing us so that we have the right perspective. And I think that that's, that's a key knowing that you have this thing. And And I think that that also goes into what you said about moving into an area. You're going out and evangelizing. And so when you're evangelizing, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You're sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm going to share Jesus. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. We have one message. Yeah. And so, and so like, I guess on another note of that, when you would look at your work and you know, we, sometimes people say that you can't be the apostle Paul, but I mean, we still work like that. You still have pastors that yeah. go out there and still move constantly. Um, We come from a beautiful church that has, I think it was what, 700 now something churches around the, the world, not mega churches, these, li- but these little discipleship churches that are definitely going after the gospel. And so what is the, how much, how am I trying to say this? What's the importance of this? Like, like what yeah. is the benefit you know what I say? Like, we, okay, let's go share in another country, in another country, in another country. And let's just take it, let's take it down to our church for a second. Mm-hmm. Why greater grace message going to different places that already have the message? What, what is the, you know, people are always asking why more churches? So why more churches, yeah. Pastor Bailey? It's, it's just this constant, constant trust that God, God has people mm-hmm. and that the gospel is the answer. Right. Because here where we live in America, we're on the East Coast and there's churches everywhere. But how many times do I meet people that say, like, I don't know this message. I don't know the gospel. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think I think the church as a whole has missed some points. Right. There's some amazing churches actually right here in my city where there's four of us in the same quarter mile. And the four pastors, we get together once a month. We pray together. We we do evangelistic events together. Like it's amazing, it's amazing. But 
how is it that we go out and we never meet other churches? How is it that we go out? We don't, we don't see evangelism on a huge scale. Right. Like, I, I, I don't know. So that's why we go. Right. Yeah. I, I want to get, because there's, oh, I'm sorry, uh, real quick. Cause I don't want to go past those four, four pastors. Cause it's really important what you're saying right here. Yeah. I, they're from different denominations, correct? Oh, you couldn't be more different actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's so important it's, for you to explain like that dynamic because yeah, that's, a, that's actually a, a green light does that make sense it's like we're constantly yeah. like in these battles of of denomination and i think this yeah. is a perfect green light especially since you're church planting and building churches yeah like what i mean we don't have time for that right now <laughs> like maybe <laughs> it, no i mean i mean we do in this conversation but not yeah. a whole like like the church doesn't have time to be divisive right like it's time for the gospel like and that's it so so i came into the area and um another pastor who had just he had just transitioned taking over his church after his father had retired. So he's my age. He's right down the street, less than a mile away. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's their, uh, you know, modern church, contemporary, very contemporary church, uh, our church, non-denominational church. And then right down this way, there's first Baptist church. I love that I'm pointing at it. I think you guys know where I'm pointing, <laughs> but, uh, first Baptist church, right. They've been here 150 years. And then, another quarter mile down the street there's the anglican church holy trinity anglican church so the four of us uh, somebody connected us and said hey you guys should do things together yeah. and we said we would love to but what we need to do is take the time to get to know each other so we took a year of getting together once a month uh, with our families uh, and then individually as the four pastors and we would just pray together and then after that year we we realized that we were on the same team, right? Like, yeah. and we, we had the same vision for the city. So then we started doing these events together where we had, um, we do public prayer meetings. We'd rent a public place um, and open it up to everybody. And we'd have 300 people come out to a prayer meeting. And, um, and then we did a big one at the common, right at the park down here in downtown. And uh, it was fantastic. So to show, show what in our purpose was let's show our city that the christian community is united mm. and that we're not we're not divided we're not fighting but we're actually on the same team and we're working together in this one purpose of lifting up christ and bringing the gospel why well because we believe it right mm -hmm. like we believe it can actually help people like like the text we have that the guy in macedonia said come and help and paul said okay i'm going to get my well digging equipment now I'm going to get my farm equipment. No, all that stuff's awesome. And we do it. Mm -hmm. But the primary thing, the primary purpose of the church is to bring the gospel. So um, one thing that it made me think of, and then you can w promise you can continue what you were saying. No, I love it. Um, one thing that I thought of as soon as Shay asked the question and you started answering is it comes back to the garden that we've started over here and all the ways God's teaching me through this garden that you could technically plant all your seeds for let's say you could plant all of your tomato seeds at the exact same time but what's going to happen they're all going to go through the same stages all at the same time and then mm. all of them are going to start fruiting at the same time and then you're going to have buckets and buckets and buckets of tomatoes but then when they're done they're done and now you're waiting again so it's feast or famine um, but mm -hmm. one thing I see with this consistent, constant new people coming in and bringing the gospel is, you know, you become, you know, people will click with different people. Um, different churches are going to be at different stages at different times. And so if you're like, well, there's already a church at, in the zip code. Well, what if that church is struggling with evangelism right now? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. well, if you bring in another one that isn't struggling with evangelism, but maybe does struggle with like, you know, events for youth or whatever, because they're brand new. Well, that other church has that. And so when you start having this same this mm. unity of mind that we're called to have, then you start collaborating 
And then yeah. we can really see it's not just within the four walls that we need the eye, ear, arm, foot. It's like, no, within this local community mm. of multiple churches that allows people to actually connect with their pastor instead of one pastor for 5,000 people, which would make it very hard to feel connected to your pastor. You know, instead of that, you have all these different pastors working together and you're like, you know what, this church over here actually has a great youth pastor and mm -hmm. so we collaborate with them and and this this church has this great pregnancy resource center thing that they do and so if that's your passion go collaborate over there and so that's what i'm kind of seeing with what you're saying and this beautiful collaborative effort that you guys are having is that you have that one heart um that it's called it's not just within the four walls of one church that we're called to all have unity we're called to have biblical unity on what matters across the board so that you could have mm -hmm. this experience not just where you are but in other cities as well see i like that one body many members and half the time our churches think that's within our own body <laughs> right it's like, like the local, yeah, local no one body. else counts yeah, yeah. it's just our body right? our local right. body and it's like okay that's a cult y'all no anyway <laughs> <laughs> but i love the collaboration that's why i wanted to stop there but go ahead you uh, if we can even get back on track <laughs> but because i think yeah. what you were saying and in, going into is really important as well but I, I wanted to stop there because I'm telling you, we do it down here now with Pastor Shibley and, and Pastor Zeke, how we blend it together. And our youth mm -hmm. meetings are actually at another church. So we get because okay. we don't have enough youth. We don't we don't have that. And so we go and volunteer at the other church and help the youth of another church and they blend together. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to yeah. see when churches do this and say, hey, look, we fall short here. But here's some resources that we have that, you know, maybe you're not big enough to have. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 We actually do. Uh the Anglican church down the street, they do a dinner every Saturday night mm -hmm. for the needy. And it's a beautiful thing. They have an outreach center and people come in and sit down. You, you know, you serve them everything. So they were having a hard time filling up every Saturday night. So we actually took one Saturday. So the fourth Saturday, every month we do the dinner, we cook, we bring the food, we serve, we do everything. And then also they have a emergency food pantry. So whenever they're out of stock, we just do a drive at our church and restock theirs. Oh, wow. that's so, awesome. Yeah, we that. direct people that way. They direct people our way. And it's cool. Like among the four of us, like, of course, we're within a mile. And uh, and we've had a lot of people come through each other's church. And it, I tell you, there's nothing, nothing diffuses anything like saying, I just had a coffee with your pastor last week. He's one of my great friends. Right. Oh. So it's it shows people that we are together and the church is together. And I think it relieves a lot of people, too. So. Like one guy came up to me, he's like, man, I've been going to this church. I'm like, oh, it's awesome. Logan's a great preacher. I love that guy. You know, so it's just, I don't know. I think it's healthy. Yeah. Um, and, and we also recognize that we're all different flavors too. And that's right. okay, right. right? Like not everybody's up for the liturgical. Not everyone wants the traditional Baptist, but not everyone wants the contemporary either. So right. it's perfect. And, and, and uh it's important that we know that. So. See, he said flavors. I thought 31 flavors. Then I started thinking ice cream. Then it goes back to my analogy how Jesus is ice cream. So, like, you guys are ice cream shops, but Jesus is the ice cream, and then people just come in with, like, the different toppings. It's right. Kind of, it's kind of, dish it the, up. That's the blessing. It's kind of cool. Dish it up. Yes. I like just it. Keep dishing it up. Yeah. yeah, but the topic of evangelism, I mean, I could, I love it. I talk yeah, about go. it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like what? So the purpose of the church is evangel. Like, one of our purposes is to evangelize, right? Uh, to take care of the body of Christ, to care for each other, bear one another's burdens, right? take care of the widows and the orphans, but then also be constantly bringing this message. And I think as a pastor, like to speak to other pastors, like the one of your best tools is evangelism. And it it works in every every facet of your ministry. Evangelism should be part of it. Right? Like if you think of discipleship, like you have the opportunity to go with somebody, take some other person, right? A new guy, new woman, whatever, bring them with you and you go out on evangelism and you have guaranteed you're going to have a half hour, an hour just to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so that's great. A counseling, how many counseling sessions have ended with let's grab a stack of tracks and go, go on evangelism. Wow. I love like when you, way. when you bring people out on evangelism, sometimes their troubles fade away. Right. Mm. And I'm not saying it's like the, the solution, but it does bring your life into context also when you're out there and you're bringing people. Um, and when you go out and you have to present the gospel, like you hear it yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. And how many times have you gone on evangelism? You're like, holy cow, I needed that. Like I just got delivered. 
Like, I don't even care if anybody else heard that, but I got delivered and I got to preach the gospel to myself again. So like uh, discipleship, counseling, and then like for your own life, if you were feeling like in a slump, stagnant, whatever, go, go out and feel like you're out in the wind, but present the gospel to somebody. You'll walk back different. Like it's, I say it's the biggest Swiss army knife in every pastor's to, pastor toolbox mm. is evangelism. Um, and like, you're just, you're out there, right. You're, you're being, you're visible. So, so when we moved to this church, like the conversation was, what is the vision for the church, right? What is the vision for this church? And I said, my vision for this church would be that somebody would drive by, anybody would drive by and they would see a face connected to the building, right? Like, I don't care what they think of the building. I don't care what they see, but I want them to connect to a person. So how does that happen? How does it happen that in the community, people would know where we are unless we were out meeting them. Right. So, so that's another thing that we're just out. Our greatest marketing is that we're out on the street and people know us because we're we're consistently out there. So. I was going to ask about like what the transformation is, because that's something else we don't talk about. Then you already did. Um, But this transformation that can happen in the believer that does this because we often focus on what it's going to do for someone else. And I think that's the right heart to have is to focus on the servitude aspect. Who can I serve with this gospel message? But you, you hit it right on the head that often when we focus inward, I think there was a, there was a, a quote recently that, you've, that we heard somewhere. If you look inward, you're going to be depressed. Oh, yeah. If you look at the world, you're going to be distressed. But if you focus on the Lord, you're going to be at rest. Right. And so when we focus on Corey, our own Corey issues. Corey Tannenbaum. Corey Tannenbaum. Ten, 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 I say that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Corey Tannenbaum. Ten, Corey Tannenbaum. Ten, yeah, there we go. Ten, yeah. There we go. Um, that, that hits this so hard um, yeah. because when we're focused on ourselves and the struggles we face – we're isolated, even if we're surrounded by people, because we're not bringing those tr- those troubles, and people are not being activated to help in those troubles in that moment. And then, worst of all, we are not serving others. And the key there, when everyone's listening and serving, we even had this on a very early episode. Like right. I think it was like the sacrifice of servitude or something like that. Way early what, season. One it's or like two. season one or two. <laughs> um, that when everyone is listening and obeying this call to serve one another in love and, and serve those you don't even know yet, your problems not only shrink mentally, but also the likelihood of someone being able to help you increases. Because mm. now it's like, oh, how am I going to carry my own burdens and everyone else's? But if right. other people are also carrying everyone else's burdens, then those equipped to carry your burden with you best do and then what you're best able to do you do and 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 so it just makes so much more sense so i'm glad that that you went there in that healing aspect of evangelism i love doing it kind of kind of cool too right yeah when you look at jesus and and how he moved um we'll go the most but like samaritan woman or uh zacchaeus or whoever it was he he's evangelized you know Mm -hmm. jesus is evangelized and every time someone he goes into somebody and they start to come into him, now he's sharing in their burden. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's amazing how that tre- all of a sudden it's like, like you said, it just shrinks it. It's like, you know, Jesus is sitting at the well and he's like taking in her burdens. Like, like yeah. he knows she, she's hurting. She's out there in the middle of the day or, or Zacchaeus has to h- hike up in a tree and then, you know, everybody hates him because he took him home. You know, he's like, ah, oh, why yeah. are you with them people? But like, we should have that same servitude. I like what you're saying. Yeah. I li- like that because yeah. I, we tell people all the time in our life group, we're like, we're like, hey, this is cool. It's cool to sit here and be together. And I tell them all the time, but you got to turn out. If you, you, you want to grow like spiritually, yeah. you got to turn out and start talking to other people. Yeah, it, it's, it's just a huge part, like you're saying, of our um, of the church actually and how we go out and evangelize because you see it all through acts they're just moving and moving and they're moving, moving and moving yeah, yeah. even and when they get persecuted they move and guess what when they move they grow it's like okay yeah. you persecuted us okay like, we're gonna keep moving but god yeah right god's got us i love it yeah uh, yeah like the and to the point too like why but why why would i why would i extend myself why would i give up my free time why would i you know 
do this outward expression. Why? Well, only because I believe it. Mm, amen. Like I can do it. I can find a lot of reasons to do it. I can find a lot of reasons to evangelize. I can find a lot more reasons not to. But when it comes down to it, what is the per- why do I do it? It's because I believe it, right? Because I know that my I have been plucked out of a pit and I have been put upon a rock and I've been established in what I'm doing. So mm. I believe that the gospel is the answer, right? Christ is the answer. And that's the only reason because like we talk about evangelism and I said I say if evangelism is a business model, like it would have been scrapped <laughs> centuries ago, right? Like you wouldn't do it. If you look at the amount of energy and time and resources we put into evangelism and then what we get back from it monetarily, right? If you were measure it that way, right. nothing. But if you look at the spiritual, mm. the spiritual outcomes and the spiritual life, it's like, it's immeasurable. We actually, if we look at it that way, like we're not putting anything in, we're just walking by faith and what Christ has done. And it's, it's incredible. Like I say, the biggest adventure, the biggest adventure you can go on, right? It beats jumping out of a plane, which I haven't done, but it beats everything else is walking up to a complete stranger and saying, like, do you have a minute to talk about the depth of your depravity, right? Like, <laughs> or would you like to talk about your eternal destiny? Do you have a minute to talk about your eternal destiny, right? Like, it's just, it's crazy. And you have right. no idea what's going on in this person's life. You have no idea what they're going to think about you. And I mean, honestly, we do care. Right. Right. Like one of the biggest obstacles is getting over what people think of us. And like once you get going, though, it's like, okay, I don't care. Like that (laughs) first one is like, oh, my gosh, this guy's going to think I'm crazy. And then you talk to him and it's like, oh, my God. So it's the biggest adventure because the one that you think you know the answer to. Right. Like you you look at this guy coming you're like, all right, I got him sized up. I know what he believes. I know his skepticism. I know, you know, his attitude. And you could dismiss it or in obedience say, excuse me. Can we talk about um, some serious stuff as you eat that slush puppy or whatever it is? Right? <laughs> right. And you find out that like, oh my gosh, like, like for example, I, I was, uh, I was downtown here in Marlboro and um, this guy was coming down the street. Right. And I had him sized up. Right. I knew, you know, age demographic, you know, his hat, what was he wearing? What's he representing? <laughs> like I, I knew his attitude, the whole thing. I said, Hey, sir, do you have a minute to talk? He's like, no. I'm like, all right. I don't want to talk to you either. Right. <laughs> But then, but then I'm like, okay, I had these beads, you know, the, the Christian farmer beads. Yeah. Right? I said, and this guy is like, he's like this, you know, crusty old New Englander. Right. <laughs> like he just told me he doesn't want anything to do with me. And I said, well, can I, can I tell you a story with these beads? And I expected him to say, what are you talking about? Beads? Why would I want beads? And he, the guy melted into a puddle. Right. And he's like, yeah, please. <laughs> So I told him the gospel with the beads and I was like, can I give you this bracelet? And he goes, how much is it? I was like, no, it's free. Just a reminder of the gospel. And he's like, thank you. And I'm like, who would expect that this guy would want beads? And if I would just, depending on my own reasoning and all of this stuff, I wouldn't have stopped. Right. I would, I would have just said, this guy's no good. Yeah. Just keep it going. But instead in obedience where he just says, open your mouth and I'll fill it. We just say by faith. Hey, and then God opens the door. God does something. So it's the best adventure. Mm. It's so much fun. Yeah. So, uh, hey, what's on your yeah, wrist? Is, is that is that one of them on your wrist, or is that something? No, like this that? one okay. is uh, the W H J D. Okay. Yeah. okay. What has Jesus done? I you gotta have like one the here what somewhere. Has yeah. Usually, usually, people who what who, has? Who do the yeah, yeah. thing, they always have one of those. They wear one. On. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because you never know when it's like <laughs> the perfect where. prop. <laughs> you it know? is. Yeah. It is actually. No, they're great. I'm shout, shouting them out to Christian farmers. Uh, yeah. Check them out because they got some good, great resources on how to share the gospel because he's going to get, yeah. Oh, they're incredible. I got one. Right <laughs> I love this. He's going to go find one. Cause they're, they're, they're like really cool. So yeah, we actually sat cause we got married on the farm of someone who was really, really involved in Christian farmers. And so we took home okay. bags of beads. So Mr. Lippy. Yeah, there they, they are. are. Yeah, there they That's are. That's it. There they are. It's like this nice. little thing you look at it. You're like, man, that is just corny. Like what? But then this thing like stops people in their tracks. Yes. And we have people exactly. come back and they're like, can I have two more? I'm going to go home and explain this to my parents or whatever. Right. So these little Thanks. babies are awesome. I think we need to hit yeah, them up and get it. some. Yeah. 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 Huh? I, I think that yeah, yeah. what you just said about understanding the value and that's why you go out, it reminds me of a story. Um, I used to work at a career center on a college campus. And 
one of the things my least favorite assignment was after I had designed all these little handouts, I had to cut them into little, you know, six by six squares and hand them out to all the students. I become a senior, you know, I've been doing a long time and something clicked in my head and I was like, this isn't just something I have to do. I have something that will help these mm. students. Like I was starting to learn more about the events I was promoting and they're helping people learn how to put their best foot forward, how to research, getting a job, what question to ask, how to answer, you know, very valuable stuff. And I thought about it and I was like, what am I? Yes, I'm handing you a piece of paper, but what am I really handing you? And why am yeah. I really out here? And why does my boss really want me on this sidewalk? to help these other kids get jobs and internships like I got. What did the gospel do for you? That's why you're yeah. out there. Cause it's like 12% of people know this thing and most don't even know your church exists. Get out there and let them know the truth about Jesus. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's the difference. That's the nuance <laughs> between being, he hates the word nuance, between being, you know, seeing it as just a strictly a requirement Versus yeah. it's not a suggestion and I don't, I wouldn't care if it was because I understand yeah. the value. Mm. Yeah. Like the stakes are high. The stakes yeah. are that high and we have the answer. Like, my God, how many people are looking for an answer for anything in their life? Mm. Like the world we live in is just chaos. Yeah. Everybody's just like plugging in garbage. Ooh, pantry podcast. Just <laughs> plugging in garbage, right? <laughs> Just plugging it in. They're like, nope, doesn't work. Nope, doesn't work. Nope, doesn't work. Nope. Doesn't. And we're over here like, hello, we yeah. have an answer. His name is Jesus, right? right. And they say, stop, you weirdos. And we're like, no, we'll never stop. <laughs> Think whatever you want, but we, right. we're free, right? I have the joy of the Lord. I have an answer. I have, I have it, right? To fear, to anxiety, to death. We have the answer to sin, to forgiveness. Like all of it is in the gospel. And it's the, the glorious message that he's given us. Man. Like oh, it's man. incredible. It, it's so incredible. Like this whole it's time, incredible. I'm sitting here with James. You know, the, one of the books where people always fight or whatever, like can't understand it. It's like, yeah, this episode has really taken thus also faith by itself. It does not have works is dead, right? It's yeah. like it's like hold yeah. on, but hold on. No, see, people sit there and we and it's like one of those verses that, it, that they'll try to explain in the pulpit all the time, and they'll go through yeah. all this stuff. This just explained it. Yeah. This just explained it. We yeah. have a message. We have the gospel. We Jesus gave us the answer to share to people him. Yeah. And like, so why would I not like faith without works? No, it's not really works. I, I sit there sometimes and I'm like, this is fun. This is really like <laughs> yeah, it's right? not works. It's a different mentality. It's like, hold on, we have this message. And and I've I've loved everything that I've heard today because it's just amazing to know that you know what? There's a need. There is a need. Um, yeah. If we if we if we don't know it, okay. Well, I mean, maybe you live in a hole. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe you live, you're a hermit. But I, I said that the other day, and I said, yeah. But then somebody shows up on the mountain and tells you everything, and now you're <laughs> now you're just as distressed. You're stressed. You have to deal with it all at once, <laughs> right? It's like right. ah. But uh, there is a need, and and you know, yeah. we we never say we're we're better than anyone, but we're better off. Mm -hmm. We have that answer. Um, and so, it, is there anything that you would want to tell people? as as we're wrapping this up that is just on your heart the spirits laid there that like you just want to give them one shout out or shout to go yeah i mean i think it's just what you said like do we really believe this mm. right and if we can go back to like okay what do i believe and it's like well do i really believe that god created me do i really believe that god sent christ into the world do i really believe that he went to the cross for me do I really believe that he paid for my sins? He overcame death. He resurrected. He ascended. He seated. Do I really believe he's going to come and take me home? Do I really believe that he's coming back? Like when I really put my faith in these things, then I, I turn around and I say, oh, my gosh, it changed me. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, it changed me. And then I look at the world different. Mm -hmm. right? It's a whole different viewpoint. It changes my viewpoint. That's what it does. So, And then the gospel doesn't become an accessory or, you know, a thing that the church does once a year, but the gospel becomes the imperative and it's the thing that we bring. There's a story I love to tell and you know, or uh, Sandy, 
Oh, right? yeah. Sandy Leach, Air Rock, right? Yes. So we were out on evangelism on a Saturday night downtown, and uh, this little lady came bopping down the road, right? Just <laughs> She did. Bop and we were like, she bopped. Oh my gosh. Her hair was like three feet tall and she was like four <laughs> feet tall. Right. So we, we see her coming. I was next to my cousin and I said, man, we can't, this lady, we can't let her slide by without seeing what she's all about. Right. So we go to talk to her. No joke. No joke. We go to talk to her. She tried to run away from us into the road, almost got hit by a bus. No oh joke. We God. pulled her off the road. We said, why did you run into the road? Why did you get hit by a bus? She's like, I don't want to talk to you guys. And we're like, okay. <laughs> but you know we're not that bad that it's better to get hit by a bus than talk to us right so so over the weeks every week we'd see her same spot we were there every saturday night same spot and we were just hey sandy hey and she'd just be like no nope. and then one night she took the headphones off she's like what is it what is it and we gave her the gospel right gave her the gospel and then she started hanging out with us we had we used to call it church on the turf we would have an outdoor church service on saturday night and uh so she became part of the group she would come and then like radically she came to church on sunday morning and she got saved Mm -hmm. she got saved right imperfect right like all of us but she got saved and then i'm taught probably might have been five years later years later i'm standing on the same street corner with sandy wow and she's got a stack of tracks in her hands and this this girl stopped get this goes i love your hair Right. I'm like, hey, I said that to you five years ago. Right. Say, I said it. You almost got hit by a bus. So you actually talked to that girl. But but she turns (laughs) around and she gives the girl the gospel. She goes, thank you. And she gives the girl a track and she goes, do you know that Jesus loves you? And I step back and I said, what in the world is happening? Mm -hmm. I said, Sandy, how is it that five years ago you would rather get hit by a bus than talk to somebody about the gospel? But now here you are giving tracks to people and preaching the gospel the people i said what did what happened and she goes well i used to look at people and say i'd just be annoyed by them and want to avoid them but now i look to people and i say it's possible they're going to hell and i have the answer for it Mm. and i'm like that's it right that's the whole thing right Right. as imperfect as we are as much as we struggle with things but has christ changed my world my world view and yeah if in the gospel is the only thing that'll do it and it'll change the way I think. It'll change the way I look at people. It'll change the way I, I carry myself. Like Jesus said to Peter, right? When you were younger, you went wherever you wanted to do, go. You did whatever you wanted to do. But when you're older, another will support you and carry you where you would rather not go. So I think of that in evangelism all the time, right? Like I would rather, I'd rather be at home with my kids, like doing something. But instead, I'm going to go out on this corner and talk to people who don't want to talk to me. Right? right. But how do I get to that that place of how do I get to the point where I value that and where that's become part of my life only because Christ has changed my life and he's pulled me out of a pit. He changed my worldview. He changed my destiny. And that's the whole thing. So to leave it with that, like like to say confidently, like believers, leaders, pastors, your faith is lacking. You're missing the you're missing part of your salvation by not being on evangelism. Right. Mm. Not because you're doing anything, but because Christ can pour stuff in through your life that you and you'll see things you never thought you could have seen. Wow. Right. Another thing. One more story. we got time. Yeah, for yeah, one yeah, more yeah, story. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right down there, right down on the walking street, right downtown. Right. There's this, you know, you walk through, you know, There's that little Silver alleyway Spring, you go guys. to. Yeah. Silver Spring, you know, that little alleyway to get to the parking garage yeah. in the middle of the downtown. So we're there Christmas time singing Christmas carols in that little cove because the acoustics were good. So we're singing some Christmas carols and these two guys walk up. They're just, yeah, they're drunk and high. And just it's Saturday night. They're having a good time. Um, so we stopped them. We said, Hey guys, you got a minute to talk. And one guy's like, no, 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 no. Like he just kept moving. One guy stopped and his eyes were red. He's like squinting. He can't stand up straight. He's bobbing. You know, he's like, he looks like a boxer out there just bobbing and weaving nothing. <laughs> and uh, so we gave him the gospel and he believed he did. Like he truly believed and we prayed with him there on the spot. And I'm not always, I'm not always just praying with people just to say the prayer, but I'm saying this guy got saved and he prayed, he opened his eyes, his eyes opened, bing, wide open, clear as day. He said, what the heck did you just do to me? Wow. And we said, what do you mean? He said, I'm not drunk anymore. What did you do to me? And he was honestly scared. 
He's like, what did you just do to me? And we said, man, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. And he just, he hung out with us for like the next hour because he was blown away by, by that. So like, you don't see that stuff unless you're out. That doesn't happen every time. It's happened like a few times in my life, but I've seen it and I've only seen it because I was obedient to go and that's it. Mm. So, okay. Are we obedient to go? And then do we believe that the message we have is helpful to people? If we do, man, we're going to be, we're going to be making an impact in the world we live in. Yeah. That's awesome. We, we hit a lot in this last I episode know, of the season. Well, Listen to this. Last I actually, guest episode I, of the last season. Last guest, yeah. but check this out. We hit obedience, submission, going to help gospel, right? Coming together as churches. <laughs> new churches doesn't know, mean, right? like a new church doesn't mean they're a wrong <laughs> church. Uh, it doesn't mean the other churches are wrong, right? Uh, then we, what else? Availability, sharing is healing, and then transformation. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That was a conference right there. That's that's right? good. That's that's good stuff. Welcome to and, the pantry. Yeah, welcome to the pantry. Uh, <laughs> man, man, I feel pass- so I feel so well fed. I know. Look, we got <laughs> noodles. Nutritious. We got rice. <laughs> we got some onions hanging in the corner. We got it all. Or I turn or or, or, or soy sauce butter and rice. I turned my daughter onto soy Ooh. sauce butter and rice lately, Dang. and a, 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 a over easy egg on top, and she's just like Baba. I love, but anyways, <laughs> and now we talked about our daughter's food, and now everybody's now hungry. you got a free recipe. So now recipe. y'all can go. I know. So, so seriously, thank you, Pastor Bailey. Yes, thank you. Thank you so, so much thank for you guys. being here. This has been, I mean, look, what a way to end with a feast. <laughs> yes. And let people know real quick the the website for your church so that people can connect with you guys. Uh, yeah, so you can look us up uh, ggcfmarboro.org, awesome. and that's M A R L B O R O. And that'll be in our show notes as well and at thepantrypodcast.com. Um, surely this won't be the last time you're on, considering no. you're like, you've now qualified as a feast <laughs> chef. So, you know. Um, I know. But yeah. And then so, I'll see you guys down there hopefully soon. Or, yeah. And yeah. then you guys can come up here sometime. I think that we're going to happen. Look, I come think on let's, up. Plan, let's plan that like soon. Yes. Soon. yes. Yeah. That'd be a great. Fall drive. Yeah. But anyway, thank you on guys for listening. Let us know what you think about all this. What was your favorite story? Because Pastor Pete dropped a lot. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye. All right.